morning, children. Good morning, our dear parents. Good morning, all of us watching us this morning. We are happy to be in the presence of the Lord. And we thank God for yet another month that has come to an end. Can you imagine? August has come to an end. And since it has come to an end, remember every end of month we have our evaluation Sunday. So today is our evaluation Sunday. We are going to go through the different lessons that we've been having. We're going to remind ourselves who created us, who should we worship, what are the Ten Commandments, what are those idols we should not look at. We are going to remember all those things in our lesson. But before we go into our lesson, we are going to say a word of prayer, I'm thanking God for this month and for being here, and then we shall have our praise and worship, and we shall enjoy the presence of the Lord. Hands together. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we give you glory and honor this morning. You're worthy to be praised. You're worthy to be worshipped. Father, you have created us from beginning, as your word tells us in Genesis. And as we come before you this morning, we pray that, Lord, you remind us who you are in our lives. You remind us who we should worship. You remind us the commandments that we are supposed to follow. Father, may you prepare our minds. May, may, may you prepare our hearts so that we shall receive your word with joy and peace. And that, Father, we shall live to do your word, not only to hear it, but to also do it. In Jesus' name we have prayed and believed. And all God's children say, Amen, amen and Amen. All right, we're going to stand up, stand up, everyone, stand up, stand up, because we're going to command our bodies to praise the Lord. Oh 
thank you for allowing us to serve you, for allowing us to praise you, even when we are not worthy to be in your presence. We thank you that you're here. We thank you that you're leading us. We thank you that you're teaching us. That, Lord, even as we go through our evaluation, we shall be reminded of who you are in our lives, us as children, us as parents, us as families, Lord, us as a church. May we remember who you are, that you're the creator of everything, that we should only worship you alone, that, Father, there is no idol better than you because all idols are works of men. Father, may you take place, may you take charge, may you stand in amongst us, Lord. Happy and you know, say I am. I am. If you're happy and you know, say I am. I am. If you're happy and you know, and you really want to show, if you're happy and you know, just say I am. I am. Okay, praise the Lord. Amen. We bless the Lord so much for this wonderful time, and we hope that you are fine. Hello to our parents. Hello to the children. We are happy to have you today. And before we can continue, we are going to pray. So let's put our hands together and we pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you so much for this time that you've given us to serve you. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you that you have covered us in your arms. Even at this time, as we learn more, we pray that you open our minds, that we will be able to serve you, that we will be able to learn from you. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. So we thank God for today because it is Evaluation, Evaluation Sunday. Sunday. And what does that mean? It means we have been covering several lessons. And those lessons have become 
So, so we need to check who remembers what we shared. Do you remember what we talked about? What lessons did you take home? What lessons have you been thinking through and how have you been able to apply them in your life? So we are going to start with our very first lesson. And it said, who is good? Very it good. says, who is good? When you talk about who is good, you're talking about the creator. And we find that in Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 to 27. Of course, God is everything, but we are concentrating on God, the creator. And in, the, in that particular book, we got to know that God created so many things in this world. He created things in the sky, in the heavens, even on this earth. And Sharon, what are some of those things that God created? God created the fish that we love to eat. Oh, the fish. God created the trees that we see and also the birds that fly in the air. And the bears. Yes. Yes, God created the bears. And God created you and me. He created you and me. And do you know the day that God created man? Do you know that day and Sharon? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. Day number six. six. God created man on day number six. And because he created man, he created me and you, he wants us to worship him alone because he is our creator. Without him, we will not be here. So we should worship him alone. And because he created us, he gave us rules that we are supposed to follow so that we can live and enjoy the life in this world. And Sean is going to tell us more about those rules that God gave us. And the rules were the Ten Commandments. Do you remember the song that says, I've got the Ten Commandments down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Down in my heart, I've got the Ten Commandments down in my heart. Down in my heart to stay. Now the question is, you heard about the commandments. How are you making sure that you follow them each and every day? Now, us as teachers, we decided to get something for all of us that looks this beautiful to remind us of the 10 commandments. And these commandments help us to do things that make God happy. So all you need are circle shapes. You need 10 circle shapes. And all these circle shapes need to be in different colors. And all you have to do is you make sure you name every circle shape. And just like we did, shape number one has commandment number one that reminds us to love and honor only God. And we have many more. We have commandment number two that tells us to worship god that reminds us to worship only him and more and more and more until they are 10. so hope you can find time and make these 10 circle shapes and you come out with these commandments remember the commandments are there to help all of us to do things that make god Happy. Happy. Very good. Yes. And our main lesson in that lesson of Ten Commandments, we were reminded that we were reminded that we need to obey these Ten Commandments. You and I need to obey the Ten Commandments that God has given us. And that takes us to our third lesson. And our third lesson still is about the commandments that God gave. But we concentrated on the first commandments, the first four commandments that God gave us. And, and the topic there was no other God before me. I'll say that again, no other God before me. And in that lesson, we had scripture, which was Exodus 20, chapter, chapter 20, verse 1 to verse 6. Exodus chapter 20, verse 1. To six and Aunt Sharon is going to read for us from verse one to verse five only. And, and this is what it says. And the Lord spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, 
out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other God before me. You shall not make yourself an idol in the form of anything in heaven above or on earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the fathers to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. But showing love to those to sorry, showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. Thank you, Aunt Sharon. The main things in that scripture that we looked at are God, te God telling us, no other God before me. And also he tells us, you shall not make anything in form of an idol for yourself. You shall not make anything in form of an idol for yourself. And what is an idol? Anything awesome, anyone, anything that takes away your attention, attention. that takes away your love for God, mm -hmm. anything that takes your concentration. Instead of you loving God, instead of you worshiping Him, instead of you singing, reading the word, I want to do this thing. Uh, what, are, what is that one thing that you love most? What is that one thing that takes away your focus, that takes away your love? And Sharon, you know some of those things that we love most? A new dress, oh, beautiful new. one. <laughs> if I don't have that beautiful dress, I will not go to church. The other thing that we love most these days are our gadgets. We have tabs, we have phones, we have computers. And games. And games. These things take a lot of our attention. You are on the TV all the day. When they tell you it's time for Sunday school, time for service, you do not want to do anything you don't want to listen instead you want to watch your cartoons when they tell in the morning very early in the morning before even you say your morning prayer you check your phone you check your things are my things up to date is everything working that is taking your love you are loving it more and more and god is not happy with you because he's taking his place in your life. Mm. And Anshan is going to tell us the lesson that we learned. One thing that we all picked from this lesson of no having idols in our lives. God wants you and me to worship only him. God wants you and me to worship only him at all times. At all times. So that takes us to our very last lesson, lesson number four. Do you remember what it says? Oh, yes, lesson number four. And it had an interesting character. It had a very powerful king, a king that, a king that started drilling when he's very young. And his name is King Manasseh. King Manasseh. Do you know where we find that scripture? Where we find that story? We find it in the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 33, from verse 1 to 20. 2 Chronicles, chapter 33, from verse 1 to 20. I will just give a, a very brief background of what happened to this king. This king was so powerful. He did a lot of things. Uh, in, during his time of ruling, he worshipped so many small gods. He did a lot of statues that people were worshipping. He put up, right. so even to the point of putting up idols in the temple of God. Oh my putting God. up idols in the temple of God. And you know what? God was not happy. God was very sad. He went on and told this king to, to repent over his sins. And the king did not repent. He went on to worship idols. And when God saw that this man is not returning to him, he sends people, he sends people to take him up as a prisoner. Do you know what they did to him? 
they got him. They even put a hoof in his nose. That is very, very, very funny. Do you see that picture? It's very funny. He was in much pain, in so much distress. And when he got to realize that, he humbled himself. He humbled himself and told God, I am sorry. He repented. And you know what beautiful thing happened? Because God is a merciful God, he loves us so much. He forgave this king. Wonderful. He forgave this king and gave wow. him a second chance. What do you pick from that lesson? That when we get to a point of losing focus, when we fail to, to obey God, when we fail to worship, worship him alone, He's still giving us a chance to come back and say to say back to say to him that God, I'm sorry, and he will forgive you. And we have a very, very beautiful activity to crown up this lesson. This activity is of what fills you up. What do you keep you what do you keep doing all the day? What do you do most? What fills you up? Is it the TV? If it is the TV, then what is in you? That means you know all the programs on TV. You know what is next, what is going to happen. And so all you'll be thinking about is TV. All you know is TV. If you have gadgets and that is what you're filling yourself with, you're filling yourself with games all the time, then that means you know all the games and you become a pro. You're very, very, very good at games no one beats you but if we have this this glass representing me and i have water in this can in this jerry can it's jerry can the water in the jerry can representing the holy spirit or we can say the word of god so if we fill ourselves with god if we fill ourselves with the love of god all the time do you know what is going to happen we are going to overflow wow. And God is going to be what is reflected in our lives. He is going to be number one. Everything that, we have, that, that comes up in our lives is going to be about God. So when it comes to TV or something, yes, it will be there in my life, but it will not be a priority to me. It will be something that is minor. I can do without it because I am full of God. I am full oh, of the God. Holy Spirit. So oh, I don't God. need TV. I don't need the gadgets. I can use them for a second and everything is okay. I hope you enjoyed this day. As teacher Sharon said, as we close, think about all those things that have been taking up our time. Get a piece of paper. Write them down. Get that paper smash it or you burn it that is an act of faith that even as i do this i am doing away with all these idols in my life and anshan is going to conclude for us with a word of prayer hands together eyes closed dear jesus we thank you for this wonderful time that we had in all these different lessons we thank you that we learned to put away all these idols. We learned the things that you love. We learned that you are the creator and there is no one like you. So Father, we surrender our hearts to you. Where we have failed, forgive us. Where we have not had you in our hearts, we pray that you come into our hearts and fill them up. Where we, ha we had become weak, and we had let these idols into our hearts and lives, we pray that, Father, you, can, you come and fill in us, just like the water that we've seen. Come and fill in us. Let your word fill in us. Remind us to always read your word. Remind us to always do things that make you happy so that we are able to, 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 to overflow and to make all the people around us and all the different things around us be filled with you. We thank you because you've heard us. We thank you for you are with us. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Can we give God a very, very big hand clap? I hope you enjoyed the lessons, the review of the lessons. Me personally, I did, and I have been reminded a lot. So I
one song that is going to tell you the why says all the other gods are works, works of, of men. men. Let me see everyone clap and say, <laughs> all the other gods, they are the works of men. You are the most high God. There is none like you, Jehovah. You are the most high. You are the most high God. You are the most high. You are the most high God. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.